The bride went to a cake decorator getting ready for her wedding. And she told him that she wanted to have a scripture verse put on her wedding cake. And the, script, the cake decorator thought, okay, that's fine. What is the scripture verse? And she told him, she said, it's 1 John chapter 4, verse 18. And it says, in love there is no fear, but perfect love casts out all fear. So a very nice scripture verse, nice thing for a wedding. She just gave him the verse and said, well, you know, go look it up. Well, the day of the wedding arrived, and everyone was horrified, because obviously the cake decorator knew absolutely nothing about the Bible. Maybe never he'd even opened it. And instead of going to 1 John, he went to, the chap- to John the Gospel. And John the Gospel, chapter 4, verse 18, is nothing like what was said in the letter of 1 John. Because the Gospel of John, which we just proclaimed, and what was on the cake, said, you have had five husbands, and the man you are with now is not your husband. (laughs) Needless to say, there was some horror in the reception hall, and that cake was never eaten. It was taken away very, very quickly. It's good for us to know maybe a little something about Scripture. Hopefully we do know our Bible. We know how to look things up. We know how to read stories in the sacred Scripture. And when we have one that's like tonight, which is kind of a lengthy gospel, and I once heard it said, long gospel, short homily, so I'll try to stick to that tonight as well. But it has a lot of symbolism in it, so we'll kind of get right to the point. I can tell you how when I read this, and what I personally do with scripture, because I would read this scripture, not just in preparation for a homily, but if I was maybe in prayer and came to this particular Uh, verses, I would look and say, well, first of all, what hits me in it? What is in this particular scripture, this gospel, that I say, wow, you know, it kind of strikes me. And something that I find kind of interesting is, first of all, that Jesus talked to this woman, because as it says, why are you talking to me? You know, she was a woman, and it was not proper for men and women to meet, to talk at somebody that they were not married to. Secondly, she was a Samaritan, so there was kind of a profile that was put on her. But Jesus overcomes that. I think he gives us a great example of loving here. And thirdly, there is the fact that she was there at noontime. No one else was there. No one else was there because of the fact that this woman was an outcast. But Jesus didn't care about any of that. Now, her friends all went to the well in the morning... But she would have gone at noontime. She wanted to avoid them because she didn't want to hear the gossip about herself. And they probably were all gossiping about her. So she goes to the well at noon to be by herself. The other thing that strikes me here is I think it's beautiful how a well is the center of this particular scripture. A well. Now, we don't know much about wells. You know, if you're on City of Altamont Water or Lake Mary, whatever it is, some of our homes may have a well, and you know when it's working right, and certainly you know when it's not working right. It's a problem. So a well is very important. They didn't have plumbing like we have today. They're in Israel. It's not like modern day where you just turned on the faucet. But think about the day that happened to us not too long ago at the rectory. We turned on the water, and nothing came out. And it's like, oh my gosh, what are we going to do? Suddenly there's panic. The well was a center of activity. The well was a really important place. It was kind of like Publix. Like everybody goes to Publix, you see your friends, you meet other people, you get to know the checkout people, you kind of know the place around it. It's kind of like a center of activity. So it's an important place in the town. I just kind of picture in the middle of this desert, there's this well and there's like greenery and palm trees around it. So when I would read this, I try to picture it in my mind. I find it interesting how they also address one another. And Jesus is kind of like woman. It's very it's kind of stern, I think. Like today in our language, it tells me their language of the Bible was very different than today. You know, husbands, I, I highly suggest you don't speak that way to your wives this evening. Woman, where is my dinner? Or something. Or the same for the hus- men, women. Don't say, man, where is you know, my food this evening? I think it's just, it's just not 
how we speak today. We have a little bit more of a maybe courtesy, but that was how they spoke to each other back then. So it tells me that, you know what, the way the scriptures are written aren't the way we necessarily address people today. We have to put it into our own context. Also, the woman at the well addresses Jesus first as sir, then he calls him a prophet, then she calls him and agrees he's the Messiah. Wow, what a progression. Sir, you're a stranger. Now you know something about me. You're a prophet. And then, wow, you're the savior of the world. You're the Messiah. Isn't that wonderful? I think also when she leaves there and she tells her friends, and she goes back to the town. She didn't have any friends, but she goes back to the town and tells the people, I met this man, and he told me everything about me. Wow. You know, she didn't say to the people, wow, I met this man at the well, and he gave me water, and it was really neat water about spirit and truth, and suddenly getting into this theological discussion. She didn't mention anything about worship or the temple or Samaritan or Jew. No. She just said, he told me everything about me. So that really pierced her heart. She was struck. She was probably silenced. Like, how do you know me? Well, guess what, folks? Jesus knows us. Jesus knows us through and through. And he's watching when we think no one else is looking. So to her, it was really a shock of this guy knows me. Maybe it was a good sense of who God is. Who is God? God's watching all of us. So today, it's good for us to apply this to our own life and think, well, where is it now that I apply this in my life and where do I see myself in the scripture? Where do I see myself in this gospel? You know, a lot of people maybe can relate to the woman at the well. Whatever your history is, maybe you've had a past. We all have a past. But guess what? We all have a future. We all have a future with God. So maybe... You are like the woman at the well. I'm going to give you something to think about. Christopher mentioned at the beginning of Mass about the sacred notes in the pew. We put them in the pew during Lent. Matthew Kelly talks about this in his books, about taking some notes at Mass. So we're providing the notes for you. So folks, I'm going to make it real easy for you. If you're wondering, well, what do I put on my card tonight? I'm going to tell you, just write on there, who am I, where am I in the Gospel? I'm I'm feeding you here with this because I really would like for you to get used to picking something from it and saying, what do I take away with me? Otherwise, we go to Mass and, well, what does it mean? It's supposed to be living the rest of this week, not just for this one hour we're here. So take a note card. Write something down. I'm not offended. Take out your cell phone and start texting. I might be offended, but I'm not offended by writing something down on a note card. It's kind of a good practice to get into. So maybe you're the woman at the well. You know what? Maybe you're one of the more inanimate type objects there, like the well. Guess what? That's what we're all called to be. We're called to be a well because wells fill up and then people come and draw. So think about that for a moment. God fills us up and then we're also called to share. So we take our faith, of which God gives us. He gives us a lot of grace, my friends. God is giving us grace at every moment of every day, some more so than others. Sometimes we're we're incredibly surprised. I hope that this Lent you're looking for something sacred in the everyday, finding holiness in the everyday. So you take that opportunity to say, well, God, how did you fill me up today, and how am I called to share it? We don't just keep our faith to ourselves. We're called to share good news. So maybe you are like the well. You've been baptized. God has given you the good water, the grace-filled water. Now what do you do with it? We're not about couch potato Catholicism and Christianity. We're about living our faith and sharing it. So maybe we're the well. Maybe you're the woman at the well. Maybe you're the well. Guess what? Maybe you're the jar. Like, look at all the different pieces in this and think, if I'm sitting there, what does this all look like? You know, maybe you're an observer off on the side. Maybe you're the woman at the well. Maybe you think you're Jesus. If you are, I really want to meet you because you've got a great self-confidence in yourself. And that's what we're called to be. But, you know, maybe you're the jar. Maybe you're like the jar that's there. And guess what? The jar was left behind. I think it's important for us to remember that 
maybe sometimes in faith we feel left behind. Especially when we have like a season of Lent and maybe you think, well, gosh, I'm like the jar and she left it behind. She didn't even fill it. She didn't put any of the water in it. Maybe this Lent isn't going that great for you. So maybe you are like that jar. And if you are, don't feel sorry for yourself. Rather say, now is the time for me to get back on the potter's wheel and for God to form me into the person he wants me to be. And maybe then, if you're feeling empty, ask the question, what are you looking for? When that woman went to the well that day, she had no idea she was going to be filled. But God surprised her. And God is going to surprise each one of us in some way today. So I ask you, think about that. Reread this scripture even when you go home. Look it up on the internet. It's on our website, nunciationorlando.org. You know, go to the scriptures. Go to usccb.org slash Bible. It's all there. Go to a Bible. Wow, that would be pretty novel, wouldn't it? John chapter 4, chap, chapter 4, verse 18. Look it up. You might find yourself in 1 John, and you're going to be really confused then. But say, hey, I know something more. And go to John chapter 4, verse 18, and kind of look through there. Maybe reread it and say, yeah, how did this sit with me? Because God is speaking to us in this word. And somewhere in there, he's including us. I don't know where you're at in that gospel. I can share with you a little bit about my own personal experience, my own personal prayer with it. But I would invite you to do the same. And to think about where God is putting you at this moment. Who is he calling you to be? Are you the woman at the well, rejoicing in having found Christ? Are you the well, filling up and giving? Or are you like the jar left behind? What is in your heart this evening?